You're listening to Neo Cash Radio, where we discuss the future of money today. In the studio with you, it's JJ and Randy. Iceland loves pirates. The GAO says the HHS is stealing. Zcash launches. Segwit is patched up. All this and more on episode 180 here on Wednesday, November 2nd, 2016. In the traditional markets, we've got gold at $1,298, silver at $18.50. Oil at $45.60 a barrel. The Dow Jones is trading at 17,959 points. The 30-year U.S. Treasury bond is yielding 2.565%. The euro is at $1.11. The Chinese yuan is at about 14.8 cents. And the British pound is trading for $1.23. Yeah, so the yuan went down again Just after a bit. last week. Just a bit. Last, uh, so in the crypto market, we have Bitcoin, and a good week for Bitcoin is at 733. Litecoin, of course, came up as well. It's at 406. Ethereum, 1097, Dash at 895. Uh, Monero's at 470. Steam's down to 10 cents. Amp is at 11 cents. Rep is at 457. And one doge equals one doge. That's right. Rest, rest easy knowing that Darren. Darren's not with us today, but he, uh, he knows that one doge is equal to one doge. He does. Now, just a reminder, you can tune into Neocache Radio every Wednesday night if you don't want to miss a single moment of awesome Neocache content, including special episodes and bonus interviews. You can subscribe to our podcast on Google Play Music, iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher, Podcast Addict, and more. Iceland faces a major political shakeup. The Pirate Party in Iceland has tripled its vote this election cycle. The party make, uh, makeup is uh, hackers... Former hackers, activists, and anarchists, they received 14.5% of the vote. They have allied with three left-to-center parties for a combined total of 27 out of 63 seats in the country's parliament. The other major winner was the Independence Party, allied with the Progressive Party, which received 29 seats. Given the clear lack of a majority, there's no telling what final form may emerge. And... Yeah, I, I, I like Iceland. They put some bankers in jail, so I, I am definitely watching these pirates. That's right. They're the only country, pretty much, that, that did that. So, uh, Signal has faced a uh, FBI subpoena order. Now, this didn't happen recently. In fact, it happened in July of this year. Open Whisper Systems is the parent company behind communication app Signal. And for people who don't know what Signal is, it's, it's an encrypted text message uh, app. Basically, I use it as well. Um, it, it's, I've been using it for about a year now. It's great, and it's a good way to get uh, encrypted text messages, and they have just recently, I think, installed disappearing messages as well. So it's a good additional step to take to protect your communications. Thanks to the American Civil Liberties Union, the gag order has been successfully challenged. Earlier this year, the Federal Bureau of Investigation demanded the OWS hand over the information on two users, including subscriber name, address, telephone numbers, email addresses, and method of payment. All Signal messages and voice calls use Signal protocol for end-to-end -end encryption. The account creation date and last server login time are the only data held by Signal, and this data was turned over to the FBI. So their entire business model revolves on, around not holding customer data, which is a great model when the government comes knocking. Yeah, so basically, th this is a way that when the government comes to demand messages, they can just actually say, we don't have them. We, we never possess them. They don't pass through our servers um, and if they, without it being encrypted, so they never actually see that data. It's great. That's right. Well, we've got an Airbnb story. I mean, uh, Airbnb has seen a lot of, uh, popularity, but a lot of pushback too. Yeah. Well, if you're in New York and you know, you wanted to maybe supplement your income by subletting your apartment, uh, you're in bad luck. New York city, uh, has over a hundred thousand hotel rooms, which brings in more than $560 million in tax revenue. Um, so government officials are scrambling because hotel competitors like Airbnb are surging in popularity. Uh, so there was a recent law passed in New York that prohibits apartment dwellers from advertising their units for short-term rental unless the resident is staying there too. Uh, so people advertising accommodations that, quote, can't be legally rented out uh, for less than 30 days could face fines as high as $7,500. Um, and Airbnb actually got them to halt this uh, injunction because it says that they face staggering penalties if the law was enforced because it's not clear if the websites or online platforms might be held liable for the ads as well. Um, so until this lawsuit is resolved, they're not going to be uh, pla placing these draconian fines on people for renting out a space that they rent. 
Yeah, not or, only or that, own. Yeah, for that yeah. Matter. It's, it's telling people what they can do in their home, basically. Yeah. No, you can't use those rooms and that space for what you want because we're not getting a taste. You know, it's disgusting. Well, I mean, the government isn't really surprising in that matter. In fact, the next story talks about the Obama administration is breaking the law according to government. The U.S. Government Accountability Office released a report about the Department of Health and Human Services and more specific, Obamacare. The report clearly outlines how the Obama administration is stealing $5 billion earmarked for the federal treasury and giving it to private insurance companies that participate in Obamacare. Billion. Five billion? Five billion with a B. Wow. The program is the Transitional Reinsurance Program, and the law is very specific. If the program collects $25 billion from consumers, $20 billion is paid to participating insurers, and the remaining $5 billion goes to the federal tre- treasury. In fact, the law specifically states that that $5 billion, quote, may not be used for the program established under this section. That, that's referring to the program itself. And the GAO describes how the HHS justifies its lawbreaking by redefining what words mean and even picking which words in the law it wants to apply. The report concludes that the HHS does not have the authority to reappropriate that $5 billion, billion. In other words, they are taking something without permission or stealing. The report was a fascinating read. Here's just one gem I found. Quote, the HHS also asserts that the word, quote, reflects in section 134, quote, is more permissive, unquote, than the language regarding the collection of amounts for reinsurance payments and thus gives the secretary discretion to prioritize collections for the reinsurance program, unquote. The HHS does not explain why it understands the term, quote, reflect, unquote, to be, quote, more permissive, unquote. We are unable to identify a basis for interpreting the term in this manner, particularly in the context of a statutory provision framed in explicitly mandatory language. So in other words, Randy, they have a provision that says you shall do these things, you shall do these things. It's very explicit. Yeah. And they, 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 they find a loophole. They just loosen that up, even though it's very explicit. It's it's pretty incredible, and boy, I, you said it was a fascinating read. It sounds boring. You actually made it through that. It, it, it's oh, no, God. I didn't make it through the whole thing. But <laughs> the, the fascinating part is how they the the GAO is just baffled at how they can even come to these conclusions. And time after time, they, this is just one of the gems. But it, it's like the government it doesn't even care. They're just gonna lie and, and just obfuscate and just push through and and spend that five billion dollars that was supposed to go in the treasury. Yeah. Steal it. Yep. The rules aren't for the ruling class, JJ. Nope. Nope. Well, we're, we're going to be switching over to cryptocurrency uh, a bit from some of the traditional market stuff. And just wanted to mention, actually, a few months ago, JJ and I worked on a video to explain the benefits of using Bitcoin uh, and cryptocurrencies, blockchain technology, and to give an informative overview of how it actually works under the hood to someone who may have never heard of it. Uh, I'm a new co-host addition to the show. Darren's not here tonight. Uh, but JJ and Darren have been doing this show, Neocash Radio, for about three and a half years. I joined a couple months ago uh, after becoming really interested in cryptocurrencies uh, after moving to New Hampshire in April of 2015 for the Free State Project. So after months of a lot of research and lots of questions, JJ and I put this video together. Uh, it's called Decrypting Bitcoin, Blockchain Technology Explained. And if you're new to cryptocurrency, welcome. Um, I'm, I'm learning too. But if you're an expert, uh, we hope this intro video maybe can be a valuable tool that you're inspired to pass along to curious friends and family. Um, you can find it at neocashradio.com slash Bitcoin. And we'll be producing more videos actually on other cryptocurrencies and money and economics. Uh, we're building a video podcast room here at Neocash headquarters. Uh, until that's finished, we've started uploading our audio feed to our new YouTube channel as well. And you can, of course, find the link to that at Neocash Radio. But we hope to have a video added to the podcast by the end of the year. So be sure to stay tuned. That's right. We've got four videos. Uh, four of our past podcasts have been videoized. And I didn't just go with a static background because that I, I have standards. So the entire <laughs> video contains an animated moving background I made specifically for this function. And uh, it, it may make make the viewing uh, slightly more enjoyable. Wow, JJ. Yes. We don't we don't spare any expenses here at Wow. New Cash Radio. Wow. Where we discuss the future of money today and in fact the future of money might just be Zcash, Randy. Yep. So on October 31st, uh Zcash officially launched uh mining and what Zcash is 
uh, what they're they're billing it as a decentralized and open source cryptocurrency that offers privacy and selective transparency of transactions. So the payments are published on a public blockchain, but the sender, recipient, and the amount of the transaction can remain private. Wow. Um, so yeah, this is something that it's been talked about for a while now. There was we th- did have it on the show once before, and I believe it was a uh, we, we talked about Monero and Zcash, but it was a very brief uh, discussion. So it's uh, it's good to see that you know some uh, some more knowledge is going to be spread. But Zcash just launched, and just to give folks an idea, the the price was. I mean, it was insane for a moment. It's at nine hundred and seventy-five dollars right now, but it was yeah, it was jumping up. Uh, I, I saw it as high as sixteen hundred, but it may have gone up even higher. Um, uh, right before we did the show, the place uh, I usually look at Polinex for uh, some some information as as to what the pricing is. Anyway, uh, it was at nine thirty-three. Yeah, it's like I'm looking at it right now. It's nine seventy-five. It's definitely jumping. I mean, it was at eleven hundred and eighty just a few hours ago. So. It's definitely moving up and down, as you might expect from a brand new thing. Um, so the way that this actually takes place, and this was maybe mentioned before because there was a zero cash protocol that was developed a while ago, and this is the extension of that. Zero cash protocol was something that was meant to be put on, on top of Bitcoin transactions, um, sort of like uh, SegWit and things that we're seeing now, but this was another thing to be added onto Bitcoin to, uh, or any kind of digital currency um, but because of issues with getting it uh, taken up, I guess they've decided to release it as its own coin instead. And mm, you'll see that it's mimicking Bitcoin in a lot of ways. There's only going to be 21 million coins produced, just like Bitcoin. Uh, instead of doing a block every 10 minutes, they're doing a block every two and a half minutes. Um, but the mining reward is going to be 12 and a half Zcash coins. Uh, coins, Z coins, um, every two and a half minutes. So it works out to be 50 per 10 minutes, just which is exactly the way Bitcoin started out. And it's going to be having every four years, just like uh, Bitcoin did. So wow. they're starting with the slow mine. So there was no pre-mining. There's no preset founder's reward that's been done ahead of time. They're actually taking a 10% cut of the miner's reward for the first four years to fund the founder's reward. So it's incentivized for them to continue working uh, as well, it's not a bunch of loading, pump and dump uh, potential up front. So well, that, and it's very dispersed. Like the, obviously, the reward depends on the miners mining, and y- you're not going to be able to get more than the miners can mine. So, very incremental, I suppose. Yeah. So this is it's going to be twelve and a half uh, Z cash. So it's starting with a slow mine. They started with zero as the mining reward, and it's going to build up to twelve and a half Z coins over the next over the first thirty four days of the mining, and from there it will stay at twelve and a half. And again, we'll start having. Uh, every four years, just like Bitcoin did. So the underlying technology behind this is called a zero-knowledge proof. Uh, I've been hearing hearing a lot about them uh, this week specifically, and it's considered to be a huge scientific breakthrough in the field of cryptography. It allows you to prove that you know something uh, about hidden information without revealing any of that information. Uh, so in the same way that I could show you that I'm the owner of the safe of a safe by showing that it's locked, having you turn around and then open it. Uh, without giving you the combination, I can show that I'm I'm the uh, you know the owner of that safe. It's a similar idea, um, but basically, what what they're doing is um, offering an opportunity for privacy, anonymity, the things that Bitcoin was initially doing before there was you know quite a bit of light cast on it, and people could then see where transactions were coming from, and you know from a more meta sense, you could really begin to see where things were going. Yeah, this, the, the modern block explorers can just connect everything together if, if you have especially a good algorithm. Right. So um, they they use a zero-proof knowledge, which they call ZK Snarks, and um, basically from their website it says, um, within a Zcash transaction, there may exist a string of data that the center of a transaction provides the zero-knowledge proof along with the encrypted transaction data, which proves properties of the encrypted data crypto- cryptographically, wow. including that the sender couldn't have generated that string unless they had ownership over the spending key and unless the input and output values are equal. The proof also guarantees creation of a unique nullifier, which is used to mark tokens as spent when they are in fact spent. This allows for verification that the transaction is valid while preserving privacy of the transaction details. And there are actually two types of addresses. They have a tr- they have transparent and shielded addresses. And so a transparent address and the amounts from those transactions, those, those can be publicly visible on a blockchain similar to Bitcoin. Um, but if one chooses to use a shielded address, it becomes obscured on the public ledger. 
And if both the sender and the receiver in a transaction are using the shielded addresses, the amount is encrypted as well. Wow. Um, so they're calling this selective disclosure. And um, I, I'm sorry, they're, they're also working on a, a selective disclosure, which is allowing view keys. Um, those are on the horizon for the development team. And they would that would allow users to reveal some of the information about their own transactions to third parties. Um, so it, it also has an encrypted memo field, which would allow any of those institutions, those third parties to attach any data to transactions and make uh, information visible to authorized parties. So you as the account holder control all of that. Um, but that's something they're working on. And um, yeah, it's, it's something that I'm definitely gonna be watching. There's um, So it's, it, there's a lot of uh, this that's similar to Bitcoin, but there's also a lot that's different too. Yeah, well, first off, there's a two megabyte block size. And again, it's a 2.5 minute block time. So it's a quarter of the time as Bitcoin's block time. So there's there's a potential for a lot more transactions. Um, and in the same way that Bitcoin was 50 Bitcoin as the mining reward to start, this is 12 and a half per two and a half minutes. So it works out to 50 per 10 minutes. So it is the same there. And um, the same as with the, the no crowd sale and no pre mine and things like that. So um, that's kind of the simil that's the similarities to Bitcoin. As far as what's different, it is just the the ability to shield your address and to really have what looks like more privacy and anonymity. So um, well, and and the other thing too is is the the crew behind this and the people that have aligned themselves with the, the, the name Zcash in the very least are, are a, a large number of people that are big into other projects, like, for instance, Roger Ver mm -hmm. is the cast list listed. Uh, Vitalik is on the founder's board, right? Yes. So Vitalik Buterin from the Ethereum Foundation, we're actually going to talk to him and talk about him in a second here. Um, he, he's on the advisory board. Roger Ver is an investor. Um, Eric Voorhees, Eric Voorhees is a whole list of people that if you've been you know, paying any kind of attention to Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies the last few years, again, me being here for only a year and a half or so, um, you know, I've seen these names popping up quite a bit, so, uh, it, it looks pretty promising and I'm, I'm very interested in it. Um, you know, well, here's the, the thing is, is because there's been no, uh, pre-mine, there's no ICO, there's nothing. It's starting off at a very even and blank slate and the first to mine are the first to adopt, right? So if you're running a miner or you're not running it yourself, maybe renting it from somewhere or, or cloud mining, whatever it might be. These are the first people in the market that that are going to get these coins and running and mining these days is not as simple as you know uh, turning on a light switch. So it it really is uh, something I want to watch the price. I want to watch the price as things start to hit the market, just because this is sort of a is something we haven't seen much of. Most of the coins coming out now have either token sales or fundraising sales or ICOs or right. some pre-mine, right? So there are very few coins that I've seen come out in, in the last year that haven't had any pre-mine, none of those things. Right. So that alone, I think, gives a lot of value to this coin over other coins. I agree. I agree. And um, Jax actually integrated, uh, the Jax wallet just integrated Zero Cash, uh, Zcash, excuse me, Zcash onto its... Uh, onto its platform, onto its app. There are some exchanges that are currently offering it, although there aren't that many coins quite yet, but uh, they are already up for sale. And um, gosh, I lost it. There was one other thing I was going to say about it, but away it went. Well, uh, we can talk about Ethereum. Sure. Uh, well, with the zero knowledge proofs, Vitalik, actually, uh, the, the Ethereum co-founder and chief scientist Vitalik Buterin just recently tweeted uh, that zero knowledge proofs had been on Ethereum's roadmap for more than two months. Uh, in fact, so Vitalik is one of the advisors to Zcash, um, and the Zcash developers had actually announced a zero cash over Ethereum capability in late July. Um, so what they did was they used one of these ZK Snark verifiers in Ethereum to implement a primitive coin mixing contract using a simplified variant of ZO Cash, which was that the protocol I was telling you about that Zcash is based off of. Right. They called it. Uh, ZOE, zero cash over Ethereum, and the contract allows you to deposit discrete amounts of, eth of Ether by inserting a commitment to a serial number inside of a Merkle tree. So this is you know, some hashed number that's maintained by the contract. In order to withdraw without revealing which commitment you're spending, uh, which would link the withdrawal with the deposit, 
One of those zero-proof ZK snarks proves that you know which commitment is inside the Merkle tree of the contract. In order to prevent double spending, they do so while revealing the serial number which the contract remembers and prohibits reuse of. And in order to prohibit uh, other users from taking the proof and withdrawing without your permission, the proof also, also authenticates for a withdrawal address in Ethereum, which is authorized to receive the funds from the contract. So they've used it as an overlay, which is what was originally planned to do over Bitcoin. They've shown that it's capable to do that over Ethereum, and uh, Vitalik sounds like he's really on board with it. So it'll also be interesting to see how Zcash functions once uh, its abilities, once those zero-knowledge proofs can be moved to other currencies, cryptocurrencies as well. Yeah, I I really like the idea of of these different blockchains and uh, interweaving and and working together and seeing how this is. Like, it seems almost like Ethereum is one of those things where it's just the the glue that holds Zcash together with some other uh, other app or some other blockchain. And and you know what I'm saying? Like, maybe, um, I mean, we mentioned LBRY, that, you know, Zcash... Uh, payments is like so easy to do at this point that everybody has it on their phone. And then it's so it's like, well, if you can uh, convert your Zcash to another currency and use it on your platform, whether it's Steemit or, or LBRY or any number of, or maybe uh, BitCash when that happens, you know, that's, that's where I see Ethereum being really handy as, as this layer, this go between layer and, and whatnot. But anyway, we uh, talk about token sales. I mean, there was none for Zcash, and they're they're off to go. But uh, the Arcade City token sale is is happening. Well, JJ, you and Darren have talked to Christopher David, who's the the founder co founder of Arcade City. That's right. Um, he's been on the show before. I've I've met him before in person. He used to live here in New Hampshire. Uh, Arcade City was has been billed as an Uber killer, as a decentralized app that is going to replace Uber and taxis and all that, and it's just showing itself as a bunch of repeated hype. And it kind of has been for a while. Um, they just launched their token sale, which is why we're kind of bringing it up today. And it looks as though they've, uh, it's based on the Ethereum blockchain. Uh, they've been promising an app that, that offers decentralized ride sharing based on the Ethereum blockchain. Uh, this is something that was supposed to have launched in January, then February, and they got something up and then it got taken down or they took it down and they brought back an app. And this had a whole bunch of loops you had to go through to get, the app started in your city. You had to build all these karma points. And now there's this token sale because their tokens are going to be the currency you use within the app. And it's just, if it sounds as complicated as I'm making it sound, I think it is. And they, they, right. So it, it's, it's one of those things where they had, they had this ride sharing thing and then they took it away and then they released a version that didn't have any function other than uh, creating groups and getting constitutions and such, when really a lot of people just wanted to ride share. Yeah. You know, it's it's one of those things where he should have just done the ride sharing, and then as the app progressed, they should have in- integrated this sort of community building stuff and, and really encouraged people to group together. But that it's it, that'd, be, that'd be what it is. They have started a, a token sale. Now, this is something they've been talking about a lot over the last couple of weeks. And for a lot of people like myself and, and on the internet, there's, there's, there's the true believers that are going to stand behind whatever Christopher David does. That's one thing. But then there's the people who do have a bit of skepticism, do, do look at things a little more objectively. Anyway, the, uh, this whole token sales really seem rushed. In fact, far more rushed than the actual app itself. And so what's what's going on right now with well, the, uh, the they, sale? They've raised about $360,000 in Ether. And uh, the, the, the ticker you pointed out earlier just looks, I mean, it's the cheapest code I've ever seen. Um, it's a really boring website that's showing like the current amount. And for that much money, you think they'd have a little bit better bang for the buck. But anyway, um, the reason we bring this up is because there's been several fairly damning articles that have come out, come to light about uh, the spending of money at Arcade City, specifically with Christopher David and um, past business ventures that he was allegedly tied to and past political campaigns that he'd alleged, uh, that he'd run for himself. Um, we'll have some, some links for you to check out for yourself on neocashradio.com. Um, well, if, and if you've, go, if you've gone to Reddit and seen some of the AMAs and things like that, it, you've seen the comments that we're talking about. You've seen a lot of people call out Christopher David it's been all over wherever I've seen Christopher David stuff. There's at least a few people that are like, "Hey, why aren't you? Why, why haven't you answered these questions yet?" And he just keeps dodging them, no matter 
you know, what, who asks? Yeah. I, I recently noticed one of their shared posts and I was going to comment on it, but noticed I couldn't anymore because I'd once in the past asked if uh, Christopher David had paid back uh, some of the money that these people had, uh, these people had alleged he'd taken. And in fact, in some of the articles, even a quote from himself, I failed to deliver on repeated promises to pay them the money I owe them. My personal debt runs in the high five figures. I have a list of creditors. I'm working my way down. And this is an article from just a few months ago. Um, and one of the people who's a coworker who's come out uh, with court orders for him to pay for Chris David to pay this gentleman back. And he still hasn't. This is one of the people he's referencing in that quote. Um, but the, the former coworker says what Chris does is start a business or political campaign, tries to get people to pay for his lifestyle. And then he leaves when the going gets tough. And if you watch his Facebook page, you will see that he's been traveling quite a bit pitching this um, arcade city. And it's a, decentralized ride sharing is a great idea and i i really like you know he is a he's a smart marketer and it's unfortunate if if these allegations are true and i invite people again to look at uh, look into them themselves but certainly if you're looking to part some of your money um you know have an idea of who's at the top of the company but on this on the go ahead this isn't really uh, speaking to the other people involved in arcade city now this is something with a lot more people involved than just chris but the the issue is that you know there's a history here. There's a history of red flags around this individual when he does projects, and you know this is something that a buyer beware, right? Right. That's that's a part of what we do here at Neocash Radio. That's not to say that they couldn't uh, go along and be successful and and whatnot, and that the you know we we can't predict what the future is, and we're not giving you advice to buy or sell. We're certainly not giving you advice to go and buy the Arc tokens. But it looks like right here, what is thirty three thousand dollars or ether, thirty three thousand ether, which is yeah, it's about three hundred sixty thousand dollars, right? Ish. So they've minted over four million arcs so far, and you know this is something he couldn't wait. And, and I, I remember because we have he was in our local community and whatnot. He he couldn't wait to have this this token sale, and 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 how fast would he sell out? How fast would he reach you know ten million dollars or whatever it is? Yeah, you know, so like. Well, on for decentralized ride sharing, thankfully there is another app that also uh, someone we know has come out with. Uh, there's an app called Cell Four One One, which we've already, uh, which Virgil's been on your show before as well. No, no he hasn't. Okay. Well, Cell Four One One is basically uh, a decentralized app where you can alert people uh, in your community that you've selected as friends, or even people just in a geographic distance that have uh, opted in to receive notifications from people they might not know. Um, but anytime you are in trouble or there's uh, so- something you see on the road or uh, some kind of opportunity for for help or assistance, uh, they've added a ride sharing functionality. So this is a free app. It's called Cell 411. Um, drivers using Cell 411 can set their own pricing formula and are able to choose payment methods. You can use cash, credit, silver, cryptocurrencies, bartering, whatever you want. And uh, unlike other ride-sharing programs, riders also get to choose their driver based on pricing, payment methods, vehicle used, whatever you want. So this is an app that puts the user in control. So it's not something I've used for ride-sharing, but it's definitely, I, I know, I've used, uh, I've, I've checked out the app before it is on my phone. Not the latest version with the ride-sharing, but uh, definitely something to look into if someone is looking to supplement their income and they're tired of Uber and Lyft, maybe leaving cities or jacking up their rates. This is something where there's no middleman taking any cut. So perhaps it's something that's of interest. Definitely. And there's a lot more tools involved with that. You should check it out if you're interested. But yes, they have no token sale, no ICO, no funding, no fundraising. And they have an app that works for decentralized ride sharing. So uh, just comparing apples to apples. Anyway, moving on. Bitcoin version 0.13.1 SegWit update released. So last Thursday, the version of Bitcoin Core that has the final pieces of SegWit has been released and patched the uh, the Bitcoin protocol or the uh, software, the Bitcoin Core software. And this is to differentiate between Bitcoin Core and Bitcoin Unlimited. The update contained the final pieces for the controversial segre- segregated witness code. Before SegWit can activate, miners must signal support by mining blocks with the Bitcoin Core protocol. The signaling starts after November 15th, and the goal is 95% of the last 2016 blocks mined, which takes roughly two weeks at 10-minute block times. Once this threshold is met, miners will be able to use this new validation code that is also contained in the update. This requires changes across the Bitcoin ecosystem, as many of the apps and services that use Bitcoin 
this is no small undertaking. GitHub and BitcoinCore.org have lists of wallets that plan to support SegWit and their readiness. BitPay is sing- singing a slightly different tune. They plan to support the chain when change when it's going to happen. BitPay CEO Stephen Pear told Bitcoin Magazine, quote, we don't know exactly when the activation will occur, so we don't want to spend the time now only to have to take another six months or a year before activation happens, unquote. Six months to a year does not seem unreasonable given that the current support for bigger block solutions. Node counter lists bigger block support at 10.6% with 106 of the last thousand blocks mined with big block miners. Bitcoin Unlimited is driving this support with 91 of the last thousand blocks. A look at network hash rates on Bitcoin. Uh, Bit, I'm sorry, blockchain.info shows a loss in hash rate for Bitcoin Unlimited with via BTC falling to 6.1%. And Bitcoin.com falling to 2.3%. Andreas Antonopoulos is a big supporter of SegWit and seems to think that the activation will occur before the end of the year. So that's uh, the latest with Bitcoin and crypto coin news around the world. But um, definitely check out our website, Neocash Radio. And just a reminder... You can tune into Neocache Radio every Wednesday night if you don't want to miss a single moment of awesome Neocache content, including special episodes and bonus interviews, like one we just recently posted with Roger Veer about Bitcoin Unlimited. You can subscribe to our podcast on Google Play Music, iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher, Podcast Addict, and more. This is JJ and Randy for Neocache Radio, where we discuss the future of money today. <laughs> <laughs>